Welcome back to a brand new video, everyone. I collected some of your favorite Super Animal Royale content creators, developers, and moderators, and stuck them in one lobby, and we're gonna hear their opinions on Super Animal Royale questions. This is Sar Spectrum, welcome to the video. Before we get started, let's explain exactly how this is gonna work. At the beginning of a statement, every content creator will sit on the starting line. After I make a statement, the players are gonna have to decide if they agree or disagree by going to one of the six lines. After they have chosen their line, I might ask them why exactly they chose where they sat. And we will have right about 11 questions during the video. So we're gonna to get to hear from a bunch of different people. I hope you enjoy. The BCG is the best specialty ammo weapon. Find your spot. This is perfect. I love this. Look at the spectrum of answers. All right, here's the answers to our first question. You'll get the wide zoom. We also have all the players, a very even spread for all the players. Now, does any CC or other interesting character that we brought today want to have an opinion on where they landed? Where did you land and why did you answer it? So I strongly disagree, um, personally, because it's a good weapon and it does a lot of damage. However, I'm just a really big fan fan boy for the um the dark gun, so uh, I, I prefer how the dark gun plays over the BCG personally. All right, dark gun fan, thank you. Is anyone on the opposite side? Does anyone here on the strongly agree that wants to have an opinion? Hello. Uh, personally, it comes down to preference and play style. I prefer the BCG because of its versatility. You can shoot it through a few various different structures like walls and other stuff and with its high damage it can almost three shot two shot so i would prefer the bcg over the dark gun but it really comes down to play style and what you prefer to be honest with you now we have some people here closer to the middle as well what's up Weezy? uh yeah yeah so i think the bcg it's i don't think it's the best <laughs> like i'm very neutral about it 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 is like up there but it's not the best it's not good, but it's also not bad. Okay. Uh, I, I guess to put it simply, my view on the BCG is like, it's it depends on its rarity, right? If you get the gold one, I would say it's the best, but if you go to like purple, then I'd say stuff like the dart fly is better. And depending on like how good you are with the bow, that could even be better too, just by its versatility. But gold BCG is kind of special in that regard for its very high damage and also it can just randomly like hit you even at the very very edge of its explosion just dealing half your health so it's kind of funny but that's the whole reason why i only went somewhat agree it's because i think it's really just the gold one that i'd call the best out of all of them all right thank you all right guys that was our four everyone go back to the starting line we're gonna get into question two in just a second all right, the second statement on this list, Spectrum, question number two. The Banana Forker needs another nerf. All right, interesting opinions here. Definitely leaning a lot more disagree this time. And uh, let's we go gotta ahead get and- We gotta get Tazetti on. Absolutely, Tazetti, the only person to be in the strongly agree if Tazetti's willing to speak, let's hear. All righty, hello, hello. So reason I said that I strongly agree it should be nerfed is because when the banana fork was on a 25 HP uh, healing mark, like, you know, you eat a banana, you get 25 HP. It was considered easily one of the best throwables in the game, and it only got nerfed by 5 HP, so you still only have to throw like half of your throwables, if you have like a max set of bananas, in order to um, get to that full health. And from experience, I've personally, I'm a Ninja Boots, Duct Tape, and Banana Fork user. Nine times out of ten, I will still take Banana Fork over any other power-up, just because of how fast it can heal compared to... Um, to uh, other utility now it, it also is a, a you know it also depends on the situation you're in if you're in like a, a heavy end game 
you know, it's, it might not be as useful, but in any other circumstance, I can use, I, I will proudly say that Banana Fork is miles better than any other of the power-ups. Very interesting. I see Pansol requested to speak and we have them all the way over here on the strongly disagree. Pansol, what do you have to say? Hello, hello. So as someone who has started recently maining the Banana Forker after the original nerf and seeing my inspiration Zypher um, use the Banana Fork, while the nerf was something that really threw him off, it doesn't really justify another nerf. Despite the, um, the one thing that they did do was increase the likelihood for you to actually see the Banana Forker because of the nerf, I still don't typically see it being something that has to be nerfed once more since the Forker by itself is already a good power-up as is, especially um, in the earlier game, because you may never know if you're going to encounter someone or if you're going to encounter a duo or a squad. And just generally having bananas as like the more accessible, throwable in your possession, the Forker just generally doesn't need another nerf. It's already perfectly balanced as is. All right. Now, we already heard a man mention, and there that person also has their hand raised, so let's hear from Zypher. Zypher, you have the floor. Yep. The recent changes the Banana Fork received was not a nerf, rather a rework, resulting in the value of each banana being less, but more can spawn in general. And having a nerf giving received to the banana worker in this case is going to be irrelevant as you would have to either decrease the value even more, decrease the capacity size, or entirely rework the consume system, which is resulting in possibly nerfing the speed of consuming every consumable, which would also nerf such as coconuts, mushrooms, anything else, even if someone is not carrying a banana worker. So at this point in time, you have to keep eating more bananas to get any more benefit than you used to. So in that case, it does not need another nerf. Over here, we have Jin Soku. Jin Soku, you fell on somewhat agree. What do you have for us? So I'm only on somewhat agree because I feel like with the Banana Forker as it is right now, uh, it's still a faster healer than some of the items that we currently have, like the Blender or the Big Cup. It kind of overpowers those in terms of the power of healing because it kind of has the versatile ability that you can throw the bananas ahead of you and heal while running, while the other two you can't do that. It slows you down and you can't fight back while you're eating the bananas. Uh, not necessarily that it needs to be nerfed, but mostly reworked that's on the same power level as all the other items. That way you can say, oh, I'll take this item over this item, rather than like, oh, that's the Banana Forker, I'm just going to take that. Alrighty, thank you everyone. Let's head back to the starting line and we're gonna get into our third statement. Mystery mode should be added to the limited time mode rotation. Zai, Zai fell on the strongly agree. Let's hear from her. Uh, personally, I think that mystery mode should be a part of regular rotations because considering that SAR is honestly a limited game sometimes and could do with more variety, a fan favorite game mode such as mystery mode should always be in rotation. Or at the very least, it should more often be in rotation because with more current rotations, you could really enjoy the game mode, you know. So that's my opinion. Alrighty, thank you for that. DJ, let's see if you got your mic working now. DJ was also over here, same opinion as I. Let's hear from DJ. Okay, you can hear me now, right? Yeah, you're good. Okay, good. So I say it should be added because I am not a fan of the other modes. It is just SVR and blocking are just, they feel, like i don't know i don't know what the word is it's like not conducive to like what sar is as just a br with mystery mode you're still playing a battle royale it's just with fun little silly things added to it walking dead it just feels kind of like a i guess party that's not the right word but like it's just you're just kind of moseying around with other people messing around and svr is I don't know. It's 
either one team wins or the other team blows you out. It, it just doesn't feel like it's an actual game mode that you can really like grind and play for. When, when Mystery Mode came back last week, I was that was the only mode I was playing the entire week. So like, mm. I don't know, it's, it's just something that feels, I guess, refreshing in a way. Right next to DJ, we have Katie. Katie, what do you think? Ayo. So, first of all, Mystery Mode has one hit kill mode, which I know a lot of people hate, but it's personally my favorite. And Mystery Mode also forces me to use guns that I would never touch in any of the other game modes that SAR has. So, that could only be good for me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, that's why I think I love it. It's the best. All right. Does anyone from the left side want to explain why you think it should not be in our normal rotation? Or maybe even somewhat. You took a while to answer this question, then landed here on the somewhat disagree. Why did you come over here? <clears throat> okay. So um, I'm on... I, I'm on like the fence on this one because like we as content creators do have the ability to host private matches and host mystery mode as well so um, I feel like if it was in rotation kind of it would probably like defeat the purpose of like some of uh, the CC's like hosting private matches hence also hosting mystery mode as well and give mm. like I don't know more opportunity for the CC's to host private matches and stuff okay. um um, but yeah, it is fun though. Um, I did like what Katie said. It does um, force you to pick up <laughs> guns that you don't usually find yourself picking up in game. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely uh, yeah, food for thought. So oh, I like that answer. Uh. All right, thank you. All right, guys, that's for everyone back to the starting line. We're gonna get to our next statement in just a second. All right, let's get to our fourth statement. That is, I am excited for Super Animal World. Right, here's where they ended up. Let's go ahead and start by going to Delhi SYS, who landed over here on the strongly agree. Uh, I mean, who's not excited about Super Animal World, right? I think it's on everyone's mind. Developers, casual gamers, uh, hardcore gamers. Everyone's thinking about it, but who else isn't slightly dreading the idea and the concept of the developers going all in on a project and what might come of it? I mean, it might be the best thing ever. It might be the worst thing ever. <laughs> But either way, we're all gonna we're all gonna be there day one, pretty much, yeah, aren't we? To see yeah, exactly we're what happens. We're showing up. So. That's all that matters, right? Right? <laughs> we're all gonna be there. Can I get a, can I, Where is it? Where is it? Can I get up? Yeah, we're all showing up. Yeah. Okay, there's like like four people did it. This is this is good. All right, thank you, Deli. All right, let's go ahead and move on to someone on the other side. Get a little bit of diversity. So. Personally, for me, it's hard to get excited for it, as a lot of information hasn't really dropped on it. Just because of how my brain works and how I like to do things, I like to analyze things. And especially when the new video for Super Animal World dropped, I immediately watched it, slowed down the video, tried to look at every nook and cranny of the video. Mm -hmm. And even though it did kind of try and reveal things that might be coming in the updates, such as handball racing, fishing, uh, bug net towards trying to catch bugs, we're not really sure where to go with that but in my brain i'm like well they're showing things that could possibly be added but no gameplay is actually being shown and that's making me specifically struggle to get in the swing of actually getting excited for it i got you especially since not a lot is shown especially after such a mm -hmm. long time because it's been almost seven months now mm. since we've had a big update in the game. Wait, hold on. Let me actually propose a follow-up question. So TZ, or TZ, nice! Yes, I love having dyslexia. Yes! Sorry, hold on, <laughs> let me lock in. Let me try again. Hold on, let me lock in. I'm, I am moving my camera and I'm going to have everyone yell at you in the comment section for bullying me. Look, move the camera. 
Move the camera. Where is it? There. Look at all of you guys. Everyone who just put LOL, LMAO in the chat, you guys are cooked. It's done. You're done for. All right. Sorry. <clears throat> sorry. Lock in. Hold on. Shh, shh. Well, Shadow, Weezy just brought up something good. He says it was a trailer. It was a teaser. So my follow-up question, do you feel sufficiently teased? Not particularly. Mainly for reasons of I don't find handballs very interesting especially with emus a lot of the writables that are in the game just don't interest me it could definitely interest others so as a teaser maybe it is good some people might find it interesting mm. i don't all right i things i did understand that might be happening is maybe a, an entire new map remake i was going through and something i did realize while i was slowing down the video because i tried to analyze the whole thing i was just trying to find something that would interest me mm. and something i did realize is i know this couldn't have been a mistake because it was different later on in the video is at the very beginning it does show a slideshow more so near the very beginning of the map wherever you spawn in you're kind of in that district of shops there is a shop in that rundown that does not exist Ooh. in the current game okay. so i'm assuming Hold there up. might be some kind of hub world or just something in general that might exist later on that doesn't exist now so there's definitely some kind of rework that might be going into it but other than that even as a teaser, there doesn't seem to be much game mechanic, especially towards BR. So... Alright. What? I literally... Uh, dang it! I kicked myself <laughs> out? It's fine, the recording hey, can right. still hear me, that's all that matters. We're gonna go ahead and hit up Irma. Irma, fell here, over here on the somewhat agree side. What are you excited about? Hiya, so it's not that I'm not excited for Super Animal World, but rather I'm more excited for what Super Animal World will let the devs do. So let me explain really, um, really quickly. It's because ever since early access up to now, every single thing that has been added new to the game has been kind of formulaic. You can have new items, you can have new modes, and you can have new changes, and it all seems kind of the same. And I have a feeling that as they add more, it's becoming more difficult to incorporate them and to really make something so different to change, right? Mm. And I'm hoping with this new Super Animal World expansion, that they're laying out a framework from which they can put in new things even easier. For example, all the suggestions in the uh, feedback channel. Imumu, you oh, fell right here on the really. somewhat agree. Why'd you pick this? Okay, like, I want to see it and it looks interesting, but like, I have a hard time believing there's going to be like crazy amounts of content. Like, it feels more of like a like a pseudo like Animal Crossing like light content kind of deal and like my biggest issue is like how much is this going to cannibalize like the current battle royale like mm. are people going to switch to that and then there'll be less people for the BR and then it'll just be a bunch of bots or are you know or are people just not going to like the new game mode and they'll just continue playing the battle royale and then nobody will be playing the world so like I want to see how they're gonna kind of balance. So you, you both you're hope you're cautiously time. optimistic over here in the somewhat agree. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, guys, everyone, head back to the starting line. All right, our fourth statement that they're gonna find themselves on our spectrum is zip lines are the worst throwable. All right, so most of our players went to the right side this time in the strongly agree. Let's go ahead and talk to two different gamers here and see why they either believe that the zipline is the worst throwable or why it isn't the worst throwable. Bergamo, are you over here? You better be over here. <laughs> well, Where are you? <laughs> I'm right here. Where's right here? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, right okay, okay. Here. All right, shh, hold on, lock in, lock in. All <laughs> okay, right. Sorry. <clears throat> We're mm -hmm. here with Bergable. Bergable, you're over here on this strongly agree. Why so? Mm -hmm. Well, I've literally started playing Sar about almost a year ago, and I have not once ever used the zip line for anything to benefit me ever. And I know for I know for a fact that it can be beneficial in certain situations. I'm aware, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I never do it. And anytime I pick it up, I get so 
pissed that I have it. <laughs> and I don't have a different throwable. So when I see it, I'm like, no, get, get this out of my freaking inventory. But anyway, I think it's helpful. I'm sure it is, but I would rather not have it. <laughs> I just saw the, the best and worst use of a zip line I've ever seen happen to me in my last star stream. A stream sniper mm -hmm. ran on my screen and wrote an L with the zip lines. I'm oh. like, that is the best use of zip lines I've ever seen. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Bearable. All right. Anyone from this side? Surely there can't be a lot of humans over here. I feel like I can probably speak for Jay, considering we're on the same line. Uh, we probably have the same reason for why we're here, and that's... Zip lines are kind of... They're, they're weird, to say the least. Long story short, they're more of a psychological mind trick to use on someone than anything else. And that sounds absurd, but I've genuinely pulled this off more than once, because let's say you put down a zip line, someone's like right there, they're aiming at you, you go on it and immediately get off. Where's that person going to aim? Mm. They're going to aim where you're going to be and not where you are. Now you have aggro set in your favor, and they're pretty much just playing runaway at that point. All right, well, hold on. Also, on top of that, quickly, you can write L, so L baldy man, haha, -ha, very funny. Nice. Haha, -ha, very funny. All right, hold on. Follow-up question, you're saying, pausing, you're saying disagree to it being the worst throwable. What, in your opinion, would be the worst throwable then? Yeah, mine's. Right. I have no contention against that. All right. Thank you, Popcorn. You know what? I said I was only going to do two, but I see that Jay-Z wants to speak, and they're on the same line over here with Popcorn, so let's hear Jay-Z's reasoning. I want to use slightly the same opinion as Popcorn, not exactly agree 100%, but... Yes, I would agree. Cat mines, while they might be the worst, I don't think they're absolutely terrible. They should get a slight rework rather than a nerf. But anyway, zip lines for me are very strange as well in terms of they can have more uses. And I think one of the two could be giving them exclusiveness to areas such as in like water maps, such as if you want to go to like Sahara land, you can see some areas that are exclusive to zip lines. You can then get a zip line and get there, which would just make it more harder. Also, kind of not that great of an idea, but I think they're pretty fine in terms of success. The psychological idea that you have Valcorn, I'll further that as well. With uh, They have their uses. Unwalkable terrain is now accessible. You are the only ones that can do that. And again, you can get off at any given moment. You can go over bananas. You can go over cat mines perfectly. They have their uses, but of course, they're not going to give you HP or armor, such as the other throwables and or power ups. All right, thank you. All right, we're going to stop there, everyone. Back to the center line. All right, things are ramping up now. We are halfway through our questions, and some of these questions are going to get a little bit spicier. Starting with our next question, emus are overpowered. Uh, personally, I think the emus are very countable, depending on what you're actually carrying, so they're not really that overpowered. In certain circumstances, they can be, depending on the situation. If there's two people on the emu and it's kind of like hard to jump on the passenger side to get kind of count of it. But there are just many other items that can counter the emus, from the BCG egg being able to injure both the emu and the players on the emu, so the BCG is a good counter, then you have the grenade as well and a few other things that you can do just to get out of the way of the emu like going on zip lines across rivers there are just so many mm. different things you can do to account the emu All and right. for people to say it's uh overpowered the only time i would say it's overpowered is if someone's shafe running with the that gun <laughs> jovel just over here on the somewhat disagree jovel what do you got unless you're like literally being flooded by like four of them i think they're very easily just dealable just shoot them they're massive they're not that fast so um, you use gun just, just just don't use melee but you use you, you see that thing in your hand that shoot bullet you use bullet emo dead you won yippee i need more bullets thank you i Personally, I think emus are overpowered to the extent of I don't even use them. Mm. And if I do find them in a match, I just kill them. Because I know that if I don't kill the emu, and I'm not using it to my advantage, it will be used to someone else's advantage. And it's not that emus in an extent are overpowered because of what they are. It's 
it's more so even one hit from the emu is good because they do have different health values and yes killing the emu and killing the player is not that big of an issue but if you aren't super good at the game in a 1v1 situation you will die a very large percentile of the time mm. just because it is such a large block of hp that you have to deal with especially with the chonky emus because the chonky emus can't get one shot by a shotgun even if you're running straight towards them so even if you damage the player if that player is holding something like a sniper dart gun shotgun etc it is going to be even after killing the emu because you're most likely going to be injured afterwards anyways the person that gets off of that emu could very much just sniper or shotgun you especially if they hit you with the emu because it not only starts breaking your armor if you are wearing armor it will do damage to your health so if they get off and use a shotgun and you begin to run away just one snipe is going to do you in Professional emu hater over here. I'd love to see it. All right, everyone, back to the center line, please. Back to the center line. All right, we have one, two, three, four more left. Ah, actually, there's, now let's see. Who, I, I saw a, heart, a hand right here. Which one of you four? It was either Barricable, Atlas, Popcorn, or Tassetti. I know it was one of you four. I know the answer, but I don't know what to tell him. All right, statement number seven, Spectrum. Here we go. The juicer needs a rework. He just went and hid. I don't know if she's not allowed to have an opinion on the juicer. You you said something about emus and zip lines. How can you possibly be hiding about the juicer? <laughs> Alright, find your spots. Alright, so most of the entire lobby, all of your favorite CCs, all of your favorite creators over here, mostly on the um, agree side. Katie, are you willing to speak? as the sole survivor on the left. Okay, Katie rapidly shakes the head no. Good idea. Oh wait, no, Katie did. Never mind. Katie raises their hand. Katie, go ahead. You have the floor. I have never personally used this item myself. <laughs> <laughs> um and I can't really say much more because I know things. So, thank yeah. You. Thank you for coming in with your shirt off. That's all. Yep. All right. Thank you. Yo, you heard it here first. The juice is getting a rework. No, no, no. All right, who is over here on the farthest, the furthest of the right? Zai? Um, personally, I believe the juicer needs a rework. Its only good quality is the fact that it can give you 300 or let you hold 300 health juice. That's about its only good quality. Turning, uh, turning coconuts and health juice and fruit etc on the ground turning that into health juice isn't particularly useful if you ask me because i much rather just eat it and it give me health and i understand when you eat it it does give you health if you're missing health but like overall the juicer doesn't help you drink any faster it only allows you to hold juice and it only allows you to take f like fruit on the ground and grind it up and make a little extra juice that's not very useful it is the worst uh, uh, was it what, what's the name of it called? A uh, power up. It's the most useless power up you can have out of everything. For fact. Weasley, briefly give us your feelings while you're over here on the super agree. Okay, so honestly, the juicer is probably the worst power up in the game. <laughs> it does need a complete rework, and there has been several like rework um, ideas within uh, feedback channel. But overall, the only use for Juicer is that you're literally just a pack mule holding a bunch of health juice for your team. Hmm. And that's it. All right, thank you, Easy. Hey, one more. Let's go ahead and hit Pansel, who was here just on the just on the somewhat agree, not further with everyone else. Why are you over here on the somewhat agree, Pansel? What do you have to say? It's just it's just for Sunflower, but honestly, it needs to rework. It is the most useless power up in the whole entire game. <laughs> it's so useless. Just please rework it. I'm moving you back to the audience. I'm right, moving back to the center line. No, you guys are too funny. I hate you guys. I'm supposed to be here stone-faced, like just... 
hearing you guys out, but like you guys are just so blunt. I, I just come in, you're like, yeah, I'd rather die. I'd rather, I'd rather banana slip IRL into concrete than use the blender for one second. Like, here we go. Our seventh statement, the bow is better than the sparrow launcher. Agree or disagree? Phelan, what do you okay. have to say? Sparrow launcher over bow? I have to say um, the uh, the bow is far too um, um, hard for people who get new into the game. So the sparrow launcher doesn't have the uh, draw the bow mechanic that uh, the sparrow uh, the bow has. So the sparrow launcher is far easier to use. And in my opinion, from what I do, because I use the sparrow launcher quite often, I think uh, it's much more powerful um, to use the sparrow launcher than the bow. All right, thank you. Oh, Suhei, yeah! Suhei, over here on the Super Agree, one of the demons of oh, the hello. bow, what do you have to say? Okay, so while I agree with Phelan that uh, sparrow launcher is much easier to use than the bow, that is not the question that was asked. The question that was asked is, is the bow better than the sparrow launcher? And I could not agree more because the only drawback of the bow is that you have to uh, charge it, right? Uh, except that's not really a drawback if you're good at timing it. If you're good at timing it, you will be uh, just as fast with a bow as with a sparrow launcher. Uh, and the bow gives you uh, another benefit over the, the sparrow launcher that you don't have to reload it. So you can just keep on applying, applying pressure. You can uh, keep chasing people with the bow, unlike with any other uh, gun in the game, really. Mm. Not even the Magnum lets you do that, and uh, a Sparrow Launcher does not let you do that. It's only the bow that lets you uh, chase people All as right. uh, that well. And trust me, I know that very well. The amount of times you have chased me down like a little rabbit and you're a bloodhound. Trust me, I know. Uh, Jovel, you rose your hand. I don't know if it was for this question or for the last one. Clicking on you anyways. What do you have over here in the somewhat agree? Every time I look away from my screen, I get slipped and I haven't seen you <laughs> done it once. Uh, it's, it's basically the added mobility. You can pressure a lot better with the bow because the spell launcher you only have five shots, so eventually you will have to reload. With bow, you can just keep going till you're dry, basically. Plus, you're just faster in general. All right, faster and no reloads. We heard that from Suhei as well. All right, everyone back to the center line. Thank you. We only have two questions left. I am experiencing burnout from playing Super Animal Rail. All right, once again, a pretty even mix. I wanna hear from some people on both sides. We're gonna do about one a piece because we wanna get to this 10th question. Let's go ahead and find someone all the way on the super agree category over here. Oh Welcome Sunflower. God. What do you have to I, say? I am so burnt out of this damn game because <laughs> there is no new content. I'm so tired of it. Give me something new. Give me something exciting. Not little power-ups. Give me something more, please. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. How can I not laugh when they come and go, give me content, please. That's so funny. Okay. Um, thank you, Sunflower. Thank you, Sunflower. And um, let's uh, hear from someone all the way over here on the left. Katie, what are you gonna say? Katie, you work there! You're not allowed to! That's your nine to five, dog! You can't say nothing! Failing you have the floor. Okay. It's it's an interesting thing for me because I don't let this game um, get me a burnout uh, because I have so many friends and uh, peeps that are just coming into the streams and just uh, hanging out with me during uh, while I play this whole game. So it's just... It's just fun, I think, and uh, given that I still have to uh, discover things I can do with the private lobbies and such, um, I think it still has quite a lot of potential uh, for me and uh, also people I play it with. So, yeah, I think it doesn't burn me out as fast as it does with others. All right. Now, I know you don't want to speak. Would you like to type an answer for the people? Why are you on the ultra no burnout 
section of our question here, of our statement. You agree with Faye? There's just, you have enough friends. There's a lot of untapped stuff that you, you don't feel burnt out. All right, Katie, do you actually want to give us an answer? Katie, you have your hand up. Katie, what do you have to say? Give us your PR <laughs> yes, answer. Thank you for finally letting me answer. Okay, so besides the fact that I work for Pixile, you know, it's my full-time <laughs> job. I met so many awesome people here. Like, look at look at all these people that are in this game right now that we're all talking to. Like, they're so amazing. And I never get tired of talking to so many different kinds of people and hanging out with so many different kinds of people. And not to mention, my fiance, Banana Milk, lives across the world from me. And this is one of the main ways that we hang out. Like, I've played Star for so much for so long. It's just like a relaxing game to me at this point. I don't play it in a sweaty way. I just play to have fun and to hang out with the people that I like. So it, it, I don't get burnt out on it. All right. It's nice. Good answer. Yeah. Not a PR answer. W. W. Katie. Thank you. All right, everyone, back to the center line. Thank you, guys. All right, our 10th and what was going to be our final statement. I think we're actually going to add an 11th last second, but let's get to this 10th one first. The Health Juice Factory is the most interactive location on the Super Animal Royale map. Wow, a almost perfect split right and left. Once again, these questions have been so interesting. This really has been a spectrum of your favorite creators and everything in between. Howdy. Okay, so I would like to say this. Your question. So the, <clears throat> uh, the Health Juice Factory is the most interactable, like technically, technically, you are technically correct. Like it has the most interactable things in it. It's like, for example, you know, the cell security has doors. That's kind of it. The um, pyramid has uh, trap doors, the, you know, the opening doors. Super Farm has the same. The health juice factory has like the most things like on a list. Technically, I would say mm -hmm. like there is like uh, treadmills. There is crabs with, with which you can dance. There is the fruit crusher, which is the only thing that can actually kill you in game. That isn't another player or gas, like something you can die by, which is kind of cool. And yeah, that's like, that's why I said uh, slightly agree, because it's just on a technicality. It has the most things like on a list, on a databases that you can interact with. It's the most interactable, technically correct. If you, if you ask Phantom, technically correct, which is the best kind of correct. All right. Well, you just said that is technically correct, that there is no other location on paper that has more interactive things. But we have all of these players on the left side so let's hear from one of them and i think you just said phantom so let's hear from phantom phantom why are you all the way over here on the um strongly disagree thank, thank you I, I strongly disagree because um there is a lot of other places that are arguably a lot more interesting than what health ju health juice has and i'm not saying that the health fruit there and the crusher aren't interesting i just personally see interest in other places more than just the health juice factory I freaking left the room again! Alright, uh, sorry. I was looking at Popeyes, um... Wait, where are you? You're over uh, here! Tessetti, go! Uh, uh, Saw Welcome Center has a shooting range, it has SMOMA, it has, uh, technically, ooh, if you're ooh, speaking ooh. about the lobby, it has Jennifer Dagna, and, oh, oh, no, uh, no, uh wow, Saw wow. Welcome Center, I, I mean, not Saw Welcome Center, okay. tonight, alright, bye, bye! Bye, Okay, everyone to the center line, to the center line, to the center line, to the center line, to the center line! Super Animal Royale has too many sweats. Go. Hello, I am on somewhat disagree. Uh, I somewhat disagree because when I think of this game, I think it's kind of like an open canvas type game. You can kind of take whatever you want from it. You can get good. You can not. You can be silly. I mean, there's a pacifist statistic, for God's sake. We can do whatever we want in True. this game. If we want to be an enemy, we can. If we want to be a friend, we can. But, okay, you know, I like that. I, don't know. I like that. Just Azzy, type an answer. <laughs> okay, I see where you're going. Okay. You think it has potential, but it's actually not there. It's not the sweaty one. I think we need more TVs to go. It's definitely sweaty, but there's not too many because that was the question. Hey, hello. Oh, you yes. Go, go, go. Does this game have right. too many sweats? Agree or disagree? Uh, there's a couple of 
what's here and there sometimes I see throughout my times on SAR, but I wouldn't say everyone's exactly trying to be sweaty. It's more like just there are just folks just trying to have fun, like left and right. There's like some couple teams you can see, and then you're like, oh shit, these guys are <laughs> in the squad. I'm f Chuckos, I'm in danger. And like, I mean, I try to play sweaty sometimes, but I usually just like to screw around for shits and giggles, because like that's just my whole bias whenever I see a lot of friends on SAR. I might even be in a group, and I I could probably play for real, but I can just be like, what if we did this instead, and just not even try to win? We just try to send a message. Okay. And just leave it at that. All right, I like that. That's actually a good last answer. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this Spectrum episode, Super Animal Royal edition. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing from your favorite content creators, a moderator, and a Pixile staff member. This was definitely interesting, and I have more ideas sort of like this for the future. Thank you everyone for hanging out, and uh, we will see you guys next time. Battle, 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 battle,